For this video, we're going to see how to create a random password generator based on a single Excel formula. A formula that could generate something like this. And then you'd be able to repeat that formula through the rest of the cells like this. And if you didn't like those passwords, imagine being able to press a button and just change them and scramble them and re-randomize them until you got to something that you liked. So I'm going to show you how to do this with a single Excel formula. But then after that, I've got something really cool. What if we were to be able to take a set of cells, highlight them, and then click one button and have all of those passwords generated? But in addition to getting the passwords, we also get a color coding system that helps us differentiate between letters, numbers, and symbols. And again, if I don't like these passwords, I can highlight those cells, click that button, and get all new random passwords. Let's dive in and see how we can do this. Be sure to download this file so you can view all of the results and also this file so you can do this exercise with me. The key to all of this is to use three different Excel functions together. The sequence function, the character function, and the text join function. Here is the formula that we're going to write. Now I'm going to explain all of this and we're going to build it in stages so you understand what each piece is responsible for. Now, like any mathematical operation, if you have items in a set of parentheses, you always work from the innermost parentheses out, like digging yourself out of a hole. So let's start by just analyzing the first of these three steps. I'll go to cell B2, and we'll just start with a rand array function. The rand array function has five arguments. The first argument is how many rows of random numbers would you like? And I'm going to base that off of the user's input in cell G1. Because I plan on filling this down for the other rows, I will have to press F4 and lock that in as an absolute reference. Comma. The second argument of rand array is how many columns of random numbers do you want? And I just want one column. So this will give me a 16 row by one column array of random numbers. Comma. Next, what's the number you want to start randomizing at? In our case, I'm going to pick 33. You'll find out why in just a moment. Comma, what's the largest number you want to randomize numbers to? And in this case, 126. And again, you'll see why in just a moment. I'm not going to worry about the integer argument, but if you only wanted integers and not fractions, you could set this to true. In our case, it's not going to matter. So you can just leave that argument off. Close parentheses, hit enter. And here I have 16 random fractional numbers. If I were to change the value in G1 to say five, I would get five random numbers. If I typed in 20, I would get 20 random numbers. I'm going to set that to 16. We need to turn these numbers into characters, either letters, numbers, or symbols. If you're not aware of this, every character, letter, number, or symbol on your keyboard is associated with a value. That value is controlled by this thing called an ASCII table, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. What I have here is just a quick explanation of what those symbols are and the order between 33 and 126. So when you press an exclamation key, you're actually entering the number 33. If you type in a double quote, that's 34. If you typed in an A, that would be 65, all the way up to a tilde, which would be 126. Here's a quick shot of a full ASCII table if you want to reference it. You can, of course, Google ASCII table and you'll find hundreds of these on the internet. So if we can create a random array of numbers between 33 and 126, what we're really generating are the potential values for all of these characters. The trick is to turn those numbers into their actual characters. So let's go back to the original rand array function, and we're going to wrap this in a char or character function. Close parentheses on the end, and this will render all of the ASCII number values into their corresponding characters. Here's a little trick. If you press the F9 key, you can recalculate all of these. What's fun sometimes is just to press and hold the F9 key and watch it go crazy. I could have also done this with just the rand array numbers themselves. Every time you press F9, you re-randomize the numbers. So this gives us our 16 character password. Remember, if I were to change this to say five, I would get a five character password. Let's go back to 16. The trick now is to render these into a single cell as a solid block of text. So to do that, we'll go back to the character rand array function, and we're going to wrap this in a text join function. The first argument is the delimiter that you're going to use to separate each of these letters once they're in a single cell. I don't want to separate them at all, so I don't want to use a delimiter. Two double quotes, also known as empty text, 
is the way we tell TextJoin that we don't wish to use a delimiter, comma, if there are any empty cells encountered by the text join function, how should it deal with those empty cells? In our case, we're never going to have any empty cells, so it doesn't matter which of these you choose. I'll just go ahead and choose true, comma. And then finally, what is the text you're trying to join together? And that's everything that was generated by the character rand array combination. We'll go to the end of the formula, close parentheses, and now we have our 16 character password. If I change it to five, we have a five character password. If I change it to 20, we have a 20 character password. I'll go back to 16. I can now take this formula, fill it down, and now I have random 16 character passwords for all of my users. If I press F9, I can regenerate all of those passwords. Now, one thing to be mindful of, because this is a formula, it will recalculate every time you press F9 or if the sheet recalculates for any reason. So my advice to you is to freeze these into their results and replace the formulas with the results. Now to do that, we can highlight all of these cells, go up and press copy, then without moving, hit the lower part of the paste button and choose paste values. That will render the results as the actual data in the cells. So there are no longer formulas here. For those of you who didn't know, there is a keyboard shortcut to do this. I'm going to hit undo and put those rand array functions back. If you highlight a cell or a block of cells, we'll press Control C for copy, but then instead of a Control V for paste, we'll do a Control Shift V as in Victor, and Control Shift V will execute a paste values. Hitting undo, with a little practice, this becomes a very quick operation. Highlight the text, Control C, Control Shift V. These will no longer recalculate if you press F9. If you use any type of password management software where the passwords are recorded and you have to refer to those, I find it difficult sometimes to understand if I'm looking at a certain type of letter or a number because of the fonts that I'm using. It can be challenging to distinguish between, say, a lowercase l and an uppercase i, and in some fonts, even with a number 1. Or how about the difference between a capital O and a 0? And if you're not sure and you pick the wrong one, you could exceed your maximum allowable password failures and lock your account. So I always appreciate a password management program that color codes the numbers differently from the symbols from the letters. In Excel, you can go into a cell and highlight a single character and change its font color. But I would not want to do this for every single character, especially with this many random characters. Conditional formatting, on the other hand, seems like an option. But conditional formatting cannot perform character level customization. It affects the entire cell, not individual characters within the cell. What I've done for you is I've created some VBA code that will perform this character level color customization. Looking in the Visual Basic Editor, this is that code. Now you don't have to understand any of this, but I have placed plentiful documentation in here in case you want to try to figure out what all this is doing. All you have to do is take this code and copy and paste it into a module, either in this file or in your personal macro workbook. If you were to take this code and place it in the file that you're going to use it, then this code is only available when this file is open to either this file or other open files. But if you want this code to be universal and work in all of your Excel files, you just need to place the code in your personal macro workbook. If you don't know how to place code in the personal macro workbook, then either click the little doobly-doo in the corner there, or if that doesn't pop up, I have a link in the video description for a video that details exactly where the personal macro workbook is, how it works, and how to add code. So let's assume that we've placed this code in our personal macro workbook. I've set up a launch button here. Instructions for that are also in that video. And I could highlight a cell, click that little button, and get a random 16 character password, but the letters and the numbers and the symbols are different colors. If I click it again, I re-randomize. If I were to highlight all of these cells and click that button, I get completely random 16 character passwords with color coding. If I press F9, nothing changes because these are not the formulas. Part of that code also replaces the formulas with the formula results. If you understand some VBA, or can do a little Googling, this code could be easily modified to make it even more dynamic. Right now, the minimum password length is governed by a value in cell G1. So you would have to have a number in cell G1 of any sheet you're running this from, which doesn't sound optimal to me. I think it would be better to have a user input prompt asking the user how many characters they want in their password when they run this. 
So one thing we could do to make this better would be to add that type of code. Here was the original code that read the value from G1, and here's my updated code that actually solicits input from the user. If you'd rather use the G1 option, you can just comment out these lines of code and then reinstate these lines of code. So that way this becomes the operation. But if you'd rather have the prompted version, you can comment out these lines of code and reinstance these. I like the option where the user gets to input. So now I could actually take this information away. I'll highlight these cells and delete them. But now if I click the key, I'm asked to enter a whole number greater than zero and I'll type in five. Hit OK. I now have five random letter number combination characters. If I highlight those cells, click the key, type in 16, hit enter, and now I have 16. So this should be the basis of something that spawns other ideas. Things like giving the user the option to pick which characters they want. Just letters, just numbers, just symbols, or a combination of such how many characters minimum, how many characters maximum. There should be all sorts of ways to make this even better, but this is enough for now. So if you've ever wanted to know how to create random passwords in Excel, here's the formula to do that. And if you really want to take it to the next level with the color coding, take my supplied code in the text file, add it to your personal macro workbook, set up a launch button, and now you can highlight cells, click a button, type a value, and get random color-coded passwords. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to download the starter file and the solution file and the code file with all of the documentation from the link in the video description. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.